Hello and welcome to Clay to Canopy, the show where I attempt to make just about everything from the ground up. This video is going to be on some spray painting basics. Spray paints are not like house paints. When you buy a, a quart or a gallon of house paint, there's six or seven different finish that you can get. Your very first one is going to be your flat up to a high gloss finish. When it comes to spray paints, you're typically only going to get the option of having three different finishes. You'll have your flat and you'll have a satin and then you'll have something that is going to say gloss. Always look at the label or the can itself. The caps are supposed to be an indicator as to what the finish is, but caps are removable. Maybe someone put on the wrong cap. Always want to read the label. If you do purchase the flat or the satin and you do want a high gloss, you can add an extra clear coat for art and craft projects. I like to layer my colors. I put on a base coat in one of my spray paint, and then I will come back with my acrylic paint, craft paints to do my second layering. Once all of that is dried, I'll go ahead and hit it with a clear coat spray gloss. I prefer to have that base coat in flat. However, I can't always get to the flat paint. I'll go with the satin. When you have a high gloss finish and you're trying to layer colors, the high gloss kind of acts as a protective coating. That second layer of acrylic can easily wipe off of the high gloss, so that's definitely something you don't want to do. Okay, so those are finishes. Now the next thing you need to think about is the nozzles. Every spray can is, may have a different nozzle. The more expensive the can is, the nozzle is going to have a lot more bells and whistles, so to speak. I have had the experience of using high-end spray paint and really cheapy 99 cent spray paint, and they all have their problems. I've purchased $10 spray cans and it completely explodes on you. So from personal experience, I cannot say that spending more money to get something that has like a high-end nozzle really makes that much of a difference. If you are someone who's into doing mural art, I'm sure you have your preference and you're probably not watching this video. But um, if you're just doing some basic things where you know you want to spray coat a basket for your garden or you're doing crafting art projects and you're just getting into art, I would say when you purchase your paints, first look for the finish and then look for the color. Buy under that pretense and not whether or not it's the most expensive. Let's take a closer look at some of the different nozzles. This spray can is actually more like a air mist for breeze spray, that kind of a sprayer. And then this guy has the spring in it and when it sprays it sprays in a fan pattern now i have purchased this rustoleum brand with this larger nozzle and this smaller nozzle this is supposed to be a newer nozzle to provide better spray action i haven't had the greatest of luck with this nozzle the next thing you want to think about when you're dealing with your spray paint is the distance of where you are in relation to the object that has to do with the nozzle itself so you want to read all of your instructions because every type of nozzle is going to have a different distance from where your spray can should be to the relationship of the object that you're spraying. These range anywhere from eight inches up through 16 inches. Your safe bet is gonna be about a 12 inch range and usually I just always keep myself in a 12 inch range when I am spraying. Before I demonstrate what each of these nozzles do, let's just go over some basic safety. Spray paint is a vapor and in most cases they are not going to be water-based. That means that it's not going to be an easy water cleanup so you always want to make sure that you're wearing old clothes, you're wearing a pair of gloves. The gloves that you wear you don't want to buy those cheapy vinyl gloves. They will protect your hands from getting dirty but they're not necessarily going to be vapor rated to protect your hands from absorbing any chemicals. So when you purchase your gloves you want to make sure that your gloves are chemical rated. These are nitrate gloves and I'm telling you right now, you're gonna get it on yourself. I always end up with a finger covered in paint. It's just inevitable. So wear some gloves and wear the right gloves. Number two, you probably wanna be wearing a respirator. Breathing in the fumes of this is a big no-no. You definitely need to be in an open air place. I do all of my spray painting outdoors. I am working in a garage and what you can't see behind the cameras is a big open window. I don't even do that in here normally. I'm just doing it for today to show you how the nozzle works, but normally all of my spray painting is done outside. If you are going to be spraying for long periods of time, you wanna wear a respirator or at least a mask that is rated for spray paint. Because I'm recommending you working outside, you're probably gonna be dealing with wind even the slightest amount can blow your spray paint all over the place so do a good job of covering up a good 10 feet around the object of where you're going to be spraying 
with some plastic or some cardboard or something, the mist will drift and kind of land on things. Almost every aerosol can, I'm gonna say almost every, should have a ball inside of it. If you cannot hear the ball, your can has probably been sitting for too long. So you wanna shake up your can until you can hear that ball moving freely. And then once you hear that ball moving freely, you still wanna continue to shake for at least 20 to 30 seconds before you go ahead and start spraying. Your paint is gonna separate. If you've ever opened up a paint can and you forgot to mix it or it wasn't shaken, you'll see separation of where the color is. The same thing happens inside of this can. Aside from the fact that when you start spraying, it's gonna come out clear and you're not gonna actually have any color coming out, you're also going to ruin your mixture inside. Set a timer, mix the thing for 30 seconds. One of the other things you wanna keep in mind is your weather. You don't want insanely hot, you don't really cure properly, and it can be really difficult to operate your can. Even weather is somewhere between 60s and 80s, you know, not in the middle of the snow or the rain, that kind of deal. Spray paint does generally dry pretty quick. As long as you're working in the proper condition, then you should be good to go. I'm just gonna spray each one of these different types on this guy. Let's start off with the cheapy one. So you want to stand 10 to 12 inches away from your object. You always wanna spray in a fluid motion. You wanna be moving as you're spraying and not just holding your spray in one spot because you end up hot spotting your object when you're doing your spraying. So I'm 10 inches away and I'm gonna do a light coat. What you would wanna do is do a light dusting all over the whole thing, even if you didn't cover everything all over. Just do a quick light dusting, wait a half an hour and then come back. And you can see I do get better coverage with that more expensive nozzle. However, I do have leaking issues with this one. You can see it's a lot messier. That white one, even though I did the same amount of spraying, was much cleaner. I'll do this on the cardboard, see if you can see the spraying. It does this V kind of pattern going rather than that one spot. I have had occasion where this does clog every now and then. It is a nice little spray head. This one also works in that fanning as opposed to the other two that kind of have more of a rounded spray action. I'm gonna go ahead and recoat this in the white spray paint just so that you can see this action of my hand moving 10 to 12 inches away cross by cross motion. And it's really obvious here now that I have that darker color how light of a coat I'm going. That's it. If you go in here and you start gumming up this thing with too much of a coat, you're gonna have issues with cure time and it's gonna take days to dry. You're better off just doing very light coats, even if it doesn't cover the whole thing. In a half an hour from now, I can come back and hit this again. Bottom line, shake the can for 30 seconds, stand 10 to 12 inches away from your piece, thin coat in a side to side movement, wait a half an hour and hit it with that second coat. Very last thing I wanna talk about is the storage of your cans. If you're not going to use this can for a while, you wanna clear your nozzle, flip your can upside down and then begin to spray and you can just keep spraying until the nozzle clears. And you can see here, as I start spraying from upside down, it starts running clear and then that can go and get stored. The other thing is do not store these in high heat. They need to stay around 70 degrees in a dark place. If they get too hot, they will explode. You don't want that to happen. Too low, they can freeze. Make sure that you store them properly. Don't ever leave a paint can out in the sun. Bring it into the shade. All right, that's basically it. That's all I have for you on spray painting basics. I say that and this is probably at least 10 minutes long at this point. Um, but I hope this video was helpful. Please like, share, and subscribe if you have not done so already, and I hope to see you soon. Ignore me. I do.